This video is sponsored by World of Warships. The Belgian army is a curious case, because while it has very Instagrammable infantry decked out in FN swag, it also has a reputation for being under strength and making controversial procurement and divestment decisions. But now it's carving out a new niche, supplementing the French army via tactical and procurement integration. This video is going to cover the organization of Belgian medium infantry from squad to battalion, and their future Frenchification. At the basic level of Belgium's heavier infantry is the Piranha 3C armored personnel carrier. This is part of a wheeled 8x8 family that Belgium introduced in 2008 to replace the Leopard 1, M113, and AIFV. The Belgians call the troop carrying variant the Piranha Fusilier, armed with an M2HB 50 caliber heavy MG on an Arrows remote weapon system. It's crewed by the assistant vehicle commander, driver, and weapon system operator. The dismounted section consists of seven soldiers. The section comes under the overall command of a sergeant with two three-man teams. Team A has the second in command, a grenadier, and a light MG, while Team B has a marksman in lieu of the 2IC, although both are equipped the same. On the dismount, the section generally maneuvers as two parts, with the section commander moving between them. However, depending on the situation, like if the Prana has been left at a hide site, the vehicle commander can dismount and join the section, making two four-man teams. In other situations, like if the Prana is occupying an observation post physically separated from the section, the commander can dismount to provide local security to the APC. Kind of like what destroyers do for capital ships in World of Warships, a free-to-play PC and console game. You can helm agile destroyers, behemoth battleships, jack-of-all-trades cruisers, and aircraft carriers, the modern masters of reconnaissance and the sea control fight. They have over 500 ships modeled hyper-accurately based on actual historical documents and blueprints. You can fight in 40 unique maps with dynamic weather, and something new is added every month. They regularly do collabs with properties like Transform Transformers, Azur Lane, and Megadeth that bring in new ships, missions, and other content. Starting at the beginning of October, all active World of Warships players will have access to the exclusive Captain's Club where players can receive discounts and offers from partners like Razor and even the US Naval Institute believe it or not. Join the fight at the link in the description. Use promo code BRAVO and you'll get a huge starter pack including 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and a ship. But back to the Belgians. Most are armed with the FN Scar L, Belgium being the home of its manufacturer Fabrique Nationale. The marksman and deputy have Trigicon ACOG optics for theirs, while most other section members get unmagnified aim points. The grenadiers also have an FN 40 grenade launcher, while the light MGs get Mini Me Mark 3s. In the purest display of excess if there ever was one, everyone also gets an FN57 pistol, and there are roughly two M72 light anti-tank weapons per section. Three sections together make up the core of a Fusilier platoon. In addition, there's a support section who rides in the platoon commander's piranha. It's a five-man unit that runs a weapons locker concept, able to bring up different weapons teams depending on the situation. For example, it can provide one tripod mounted 50 caliber MG, or one 60 mm mortar, or a mix of two Mini Me 762 MGs, two SCAR HDMRs, and two RGW 90 Matador anti tank weapons. Based on my conversations with Belgian soldiers, the loaders in a two man team will carry a Matador. The fourth Piranha will also carry the platoon commander, an aid man radio operator, driver, and weapon system operator. The deputy platoon commander, nominally a first sergeant but often a sergeant, rides in third section's vehicle. Typically, the platoon commander dismounts with the platoon, while the deputy stays mounted to control the vehicles. So third section also lacks an assistant vehicle commander because there's no need for another person to take over command. Three Fusilier platoons are the close combat elements of the Fusilier company, in addition to the headquarters. I don't have exact figures of all vehicles in the HQ, but it has at least two Piranha command vehicles in combat. Additionally, in its combat configuration, it'll have attachments. 
The Belgians call their company teams Combined Arms Tactical Subgroups, which is just English for the French term Sous-Groupement Tactique Interarm. I'm told that the company will usually be reinforced by one Piranha Recovery Vehicle, two ambulances, and three engineer vehicles from an engineer platoon. This is not inclusive of logistics. Further, standard practice is to trade one of the Fusilier platoons for a direct fire platoon from the battalion support company. These platoons consist of two DF-90 assault guns, piranhas with a Cockerel 90mm turret, and two DF-30 infantry fighting vehicles with Elbit 30mm and 7.62 remote weapon stations. Although some sources list them as recon vehicles, their true role is as direct fire support for infantry. While the DF-90 does have an APFSDS round, it hasn't been used since 2019 to reduce barrel wear and maintenance load, and it was limited to engaging light or medium armored vehicles only. The DF-90's real utility lies in its anti-structure HESH round. The DF-30 also carries three passengers, which is used to deploy spike anti-tank guided missile teams with a range of 4 kilometers. This is the infantry battalion's actual anti-tank capability. This company team setup can also work in reverse if Belgium is generating a direct fire company. For example, during exercise Rampant Lion in 2014, Belgium formed an infantry battalion task force with the Netherlands. A company was a Dutch air mobile company mounted on Bushmasters, B company was a Belgian infantry company mounted on Dingoes, C Company was a Dutch mechanized unit mounted on CV-90s, and D Company was a Belgian direct fire company team with two direct fire platoons and one fusilier platoon. But back to the pure structures. Belgium has five conventional infantry and three special operations battalions. These are split roughly equally between French-speaking Wallonia and Dutch-speaking Flanders. In Wallonia, the Ardennes Chasseur Battalion 1st and 3rd Lancers Battalion, and 12th and 13th Line Battalion are French-speaking, while in Flanders, the Befretting and 5th Line Battalion, and the Carbiners and Grenadiers Battalion are Dutch-speaking. Three are equipped with Piranha APCs, while two ride in Dingo Infantry Mobility Vehicles. These form the core of the Motorized Brigade, Belgium's conventional ground army. Generally speaking, and this does vary, Piranha Battalions have a staff and service company, two Fusilier companies, and a direct fire company. Some battalions also have an operational reserve company. However, the 1st and 3rd Lancers are a little bit different because they carry cavalry traditions, so they have squadrons rather than companies. But these direct fire companies are to be reorganized along the lines of a French support company, absorbing some elements currently in the HQ company. This will look like a recon platoon, Raven unmanned aircraft team, sniper detachment, and probably some weapons teams as well. But all five of these battalions are to be reorganized under the Motorized Capability Initiative, which is linked to the French Scorpion program. The Dingoes and Piranhas will be replaced by over 400 French Griffin APCs, while the direct fire variants will be replaced with 60 Jaguar Armored Recon Vehicles. The Jaguar is replacing the AMX-10 RC in French service. While the Piranha DF-90 was basically meant to be a financially economical replacement for the Leopard 1, it in practice has little anti-tank capability because its APFS DS round basically breaks guns. But even if it didn't, the 90mm would be inferior in that role to not only contemporary main battle tanks like the Leopard 2, which comparable European militaries have operated for decades, but also the Leopard 1s it replaced. The direct fire units do have an anti-tank capability that can destroy all known tanks, but these are dismounted ATGM teams and are thus defensive in nature. You can make the argument that the 90mm in general is geared towards the infantry support role, but Belgium has international commitments that involve deterring countries that have main battle tanks, and they have no MBT capability of their own to afford niche vehicles. As a peak demonstration of the direct fire platform's short but troubled history, the Belgians actually almost immediately cut down their DF-90 order significantly and tried to sell off the 18 vehicles they'd already received by 2008. But that failed, so they've been left with a sort of zombie platform ever since, which when measured in platoons is still only in the single digits. 
The vibe I'm getting is that the DF30 is probably the more viable platform. The DF-30's 30mm autocannon is sufficient for a majority of infantry fire support roles, so replacing both with the Jaguar, which has a 40mm autocannon and onboard ATGMs, seems fairly logical assuming tanks are out of the question. Ironically, just by the Jaguar having mounted ATGMs, it's already a more capable anti-tank vehicle than what the Belgians currently field, and it's a reconnaissance vehicle. The Belgians plan on at least one squadron from the 1st and 3rd Lancers with their future Jaguars to be in their Joint Recon and Surveillance Battalion with Luxembourg. Belgium's STAR plan, published in May of 2022, lays out a transformation of the current maneuver battalions into four Griffin-mounted infantry battalions and two Jaguar-mounted cavalry battalions by 2030. The 1st and 3rd Lancers will convert from infantry to cavalry and a 2nd Battalion, probably a Dutch-speaking unit like the 2nd and 4th Lancers, will also be reactivated. So this is actually an expansion of one battalion. The implication is Belgian battalions will go to a more French-style structure where infantry and direct fire recon are in separate regiments. Note that in French service, the light cavalry regiments provide both offensive reconnaissance and direct fire support capabilities to the infantry. This is a separate development from Belgium's high-level recon, intelligence, and surveillance battalion, which will ideally have its panders replaced by the winner of France's VBAE procurement by 2030. The Belgians will also be fielding two self-propelled mortar batteries, one per language. Equipped with the MAPAC, a French semi-automatic 120mm mortar mounted on the Griffin. With two platoons per battery, each platoon will directly support each infantry battalion. Meanwhile, at the brigade level, a battalion's worth of France's Caesar 155mm howitzers will fill a long-range fires gap that's existed since they canned the M109. They were initially going to order nine, but as of June 2022, they stated intent to order another 19 eventually, for a total of 28. Although at this point, I believe only the initial order of 9 has actually been funded, while the rest are just intended to be ordered after 2027. These capabilities combined will upgrade Belgium's current low-capability artillery battalion, which only has a single A-tube 155mm howitzer battery and one 120mm mortar battery with 4-5 to five platoons of 2-4 to four mortars each for direct support of infantry battalions. The artillery battalion's Mistral air defense battery that was disbanded in 2017 will also be reactivated by 2030 with an additional counter UAS capability. Note that the Belgian land component hasn't had any air defense systems since the Mistral's divestment. Belgium's tactical infrastructure and defense procurement will thus be heavily integrated with the French. A stated benefit of the partnership is the seamless deployment of a Belgian company within a French battalion task force as it recently did to Romania. In fact, the Belgian Motorized Brigade is the sister unit to the French 7th Armored Brigade. Their idea is to have enough forces to deploy a combined arms battle group at all times or deploy one whole brigade within 30 days but less sustainably. However, this may be subject to change, and the 1st Battalion won't be operational with its new French APCs until 2026. Make sure to check out World of Warships at the link in the description. Use promo code BRAVO and you'll get a huge starter pack including 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and a ship.